A while ago, I reviewed one of my favorite GM variants, the Jesta, and that was a great kit. And this one came out in 2011. The GM Striker, however, it came out in 2006. So let's see how well this kit holds up. I'm going to give this kit a strike er. I will not stop making terrible puns. You can fight me on that one. How's it going guys? It's Plastic Disaster here and today I'm going to do the review of the GM Striker and there's one thing I forgot to mention in the opening of this video. Notice that there's a blue Bandai logo which means I got this today which is 2021 even though if I bought it in 2006 it would have been the red logo. So in other words it's a re-release of this kit. That's for the backstory of this mobile suit. Well it did appear in many forms of Gundam Media um, it was in the Gonna Build anime, it was in video games and in manga, and let's just say it's just a mass productive mobile suit that does close combat. Moving on to review, looking at the box there, we have the GM Striker deploying its twin beam spear. Taking a look at the background, we have the GM Striker stabbing, I believe it's like a Zaku 2. Taking a look at this side of the box, we have the still frames from the game, the front and back shot of the kit. And I believe back then, it's promoting the game Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire. Well, if you guys live in North America and if you guys live in Japan, it's Mobile Suit Gundam Target in sight. Take a look at this side of the box. We have some pretty neat gimmicks of the Twin Beam Spear, the shield, we see him holding his gun, and a action pose of the GM Striker. And opening the box, we are greeted with... Three bags of runners and a manual. On the cover of the manual, here is what the kit looks like when it's all painted up. Taking a look at this side of the manual, we see a familiar action pose and a new picture. Now, I know it's all in Japanese, but if you really want to get to know the mobile suit, there's always the Gundam Wiki. And also, here is a familiar background image, but in color, and a familiar box art right there. Looking inside the structure manual, we are using all of the parts except for one beam saber. And you're going to start off with the body, then the head, the weapons. Hmm, that's a little odd. Because usually when you build a kit, you build the weapons last. But I digress. So later you're going to do the arms and the shoulder. And later on you're going to move on to the legs and the feet and the waist. And finally putting the kit together. You can look at the back of the manual. We see a new action pose. Looking at the details showcasing the twin beam spear, the back of the kit, and a color guide if you're planning on painting it. Starting off with runner A1, it's going to be a multicolored runner. We have the dark gray parts, the clear blue, the school bus yellow, and I believe that's a light gray with a tiny hint of green. And looking at the runner, it looks like we have parts for the backpack, the guns, the shield, the twin beam spear, the face, the feet, and the torso. Looking at runner B, looks like we have more gray with the hint of green parts. And looks like we have parts for the feet, beam saber parts, head parts, parts for the hand, and I believe those are parts for the thigh, more hand parts, and I believe those are arm parts as well. Runner C is gonna be the forest green colors, and I see parts for the head, as parts for the chest, ankle armor, those are leg parts, and shield parts, skirt parts, shoulder parts. Runner D is gonna be the joint parts. Those are gonna be parts for the elbow bend and the knee bend. And it looks like there's gonna be a parts for the waist, but instead of a peg, it's a ball joint. We got the old-fashioned polycap runner. Two runners of the beam saber effect parts. And finally, we have a small sticker sheet. Looking closely at the sticker sheet, it looks like we got some folding stickers here. And these guys, they're not very convincing. So that about wraps up the unboxing. And I really want to see how this kit holds up. And I'll see you guys after the build. Alright guys, I am back. And for building experience goes, well, there are some moments where it definitely shows its age. Especially on the torso part where it's put together like a sandwich. And as for out-of-box presentation, well, it's not the best looking. It came out in 2006, so what do you expect? Now, don't let what I said stop you, because back then, this kit was kind of ahead of its time. More on that later on in the video. As for proportions, I expect this kit to be a little more 
bulkier because if you know the backstory of this mobile suit, all the dark green armor stuff is supposed to be an extra layer of armor for that mobile suit. And as for seam lines, this is where it gets interesting. When I mean my interesting, I mean there's not a lot of seam lines for a 2006 kit. Starting off, there is one going up and down on the torso, front and back of the forearms. And looking at the back of the forearms, yeah, that one's gonna be a little tricky to get rid of that seam line. And finally, there's a tiny little seam line on the knee, but you're really not gonna see it. With very little seam lines, that's one reason why it's ahead of its time. And as for sticker placement goes, this little red metallic rectangle goes onto the forehead, this little sticker goes onto the mouth. The big red sticker goes onto this part of the torso. Moving on to the backpack, this black and yellow sticker is gonna go to this corner of the backpack. Make sure you pay attention which side goes where. The thin yellow sticker is go on the crotch piece. These yellow stickers are gonna go to this part of the torso. Again, pay attention which side it goes on. These yellow stickers are gonna wrap around the back of the forearm. These yellow stickers are gonna wrap around on the top of the knees. And finally, these big yellow stickers are gonna cover these little spikes on the knees. Okay, so even if you did apply the stickers, you still have some color apps missing and I'm gonna have to work on this kit just to make the kit pop a little more. And I'll see you guys after that. And so here is the GM Striker all painted up. And from my experience of detail painting this kit, it's not as hard as you think it is. And of course, to top it all off, I even weathered this kit. And that is something I haven't done in a very long time. It really helps bring out the surface details. And speaking of details, that is another reason why this kit is ahead of its time. So moving on to accessories, starting off with the hand options, as you can see, he already has the weapon holding hands. And next up, you have the open palm hands. Now, usually these hands are ball joints, but this one comes with one of these. Except for hand options, you have the trigger finger hand and I already put the gun in it. And since we're on the gun, it's very nicely detailed and the stock can fold out and the handle can move out and in. Except you have the shield and I already put the adapter piece on it so you can either put it on the side of the arm or under the arm. And speaking of the adapter, you get two of these but make sure you're using the longer one. But there's one thing I want to criticize about the shield is that the back side, it's not gray but since this kit came out in 2006 i expected that to happen and i noticed that you see these spikes on the tip of the shield but you want to see something cool well bam for the next accessory you do get a beam saber on the back of the backpack and you get four beam saber effect parts but you're only going to use three what are you going to use the other two for which brings in the final accessory the twin beam spear and the final reason why this kit is ahead of its time Check it out. And as you can see, I had to pull down both of these beam series at the same time because I don't want to risk breaking the plastic if I grab one at a time. But this is what you want to display your GM Striker with. And sadly, there is no weapon storage. Moving on to articulation, the head is on a hinge and a ball joint. The shoulder can move in and out ever so slightly. The shoulder armor can move independently just a little bit up and down. The shoulder flap can move out. The arm can go up this much. Bicep swivel, double bend on the elbow. Wrist is on a ball joint, waist swivel. Front skirt can move up that far. Side skirt can move out that much. Of course, the back skirt doesn't move. The leg can kick up that far. It can go out this much, no splits. And it can move back that much. Even though it's on a ball joint, but you still can make a thigh swivel if you want to. The leg can bend a little bit over 90 degrees, still pretty good. The ankle is on a ball joint, it can move up this far, can move back that far, and you do get these uh, flip-flop joints if you call it that. The ankle armor can move up and down, and as for a pivot, this is all you get, still pretty good. So overall, the articulation, say it with me, it's ahead of its time, and if you want to put on an action base, you untab this piece, and you get yourself an action base stand, one of those old school action base adapters. And here's how it looks on an action base stand. Now I know the post is not the best, but you can come up with something better. For size comparisons, here he is right next to the standard size RX-72. Now, both of these mobile suits take place in the one-year war, so it makes sense that they're both 18 meters tall. And here he is with another Federation mobile suit, the gun cannon, once again, that's also from the One Year War. And finally, here he is right next to the other GM variant, the Jesta, which takes place many years after the One Year War. And as you can see, 
he is shorter than the Jesta. So that's about it for the size comparison. Let's move on to my final thoughts. So for my final thoughts, I think it's a really good kit. The kit has everything you need. Good details, good articulation, good color separation, really nice accessories. But the thing is, it's not up to modern standards and I can see why. I did say it does show its age when I was building the kit. I can only recommend this kit if you're in the mood for early HGUC kits. So if you like what you see, pick it up. If not, you can pass on it. So that about wraps up the review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button to see more content. Don't forget to leave a comment and a like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Day 15. They still think I'm the Death Scythe?